Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rehman, live from our Islamabad studios. Today, we'll be talking about the ongoing Israeli atrocities in Gaza. Now, this is almost a week now, and imagine there was a story which, when I read, was so painful even to read that uh, 122 bombs, just imagine, I'm talking about that kind of lethal bombs that the Israeli military as well as the Israeli Air Force is using in Gaza. 122 bombs were dropped in a matter of 25 minutes. So that means that after every 10 seconds, there was an explosion. Every 10 seconds. So this is the kind of issue that we will be talking about today. Well, uh, according to certain sources, uh, Mr. Joe Biden, U.S. President, has also exerted some pressure on uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. But having said that, still, as we all know, that the number is well over 230 as far as the, the people who have been killed in these strikes are concerned, over 65 children, around about 40 women, and remaining are all those civilians who have been killed in these strikes. Other than that, if you talk about the casualties on the Israeli side, the number is hardly 10. So you can well imagine there is no comparison. But having said that, the Palestinians, they have a right to live. They have a right to breathe. But having said that, there is an acute shortage of water, acute shortage of food. No medical supplies are there. They are running out of them. Most of these hospitals, either they have been destroyed or the roads leading to those hospitals, they have been destroyed as well. So there is no uh, sort of communication as far as that is concerned. Other than that, as we all know, there is an acute shortage of uh, blood also because that is required. And the worst part is that uh, there is no electricity. According to certain sources, around 600 megawatts of electricity is required uh, for that particular area. But hardly 100 megawatts is supplied and that is also coming uh, from Israel that has been stopped. So you can well imagine operations cannot take place. There is no uh, oxygen there to support uh, the sick people or the injured. And on top of that, the worst part is that this is the time of corona. So you can well imagine the kind of load I'm talking about on the hospitals. Well, Pakistan has said that uh, uh, they would send the medical supplies and other assistance also to uh, the Palestinian people. But having said that, uh, rest of the world, especially the so-called uh, Muslim Ummah, is pretty quiet. And uh, when you talk about the role of the Arab League, it isn't there. You talk about a statement coming from OIC, well, that is what we have been hearing about for a very long time, but it doesn't make any difference. But having said that, few countries like uh, Pakistan, like Turkey, Iran, Malaysia, they are exerting some sort of pressure uh, on uh, the international community to wake up and see what is happening. This, besides the fact that the way media is reporting, especially the Western media, they are just telling you the stories about a few uh, rockets that have been fired uh, or they have been able to reach the Israeli territory, but they do not talk about what's going on in Gaza. That is considered an operation. So you can well imagine what's going on out there, people living in practical hell. And as I earlier mentioned, just imagine, 25 minutes, 122 bombs. Every 10 seconds, there is an explosion. This is what is the reality. As far as uh, the media coverage is concerned, uh, for Gaza, there were two major uh, channels that were reporting. One was Al Jazeera, the other one was AP. But their headquarters have been blown. Those buildings, you must have seen the visuals, the way they were, uh, they were totally demolished. I mean, they just, that is a rubble now. Just imagine. So this is what is happening. <coughs> but uh, today, uh, before I introduce you to my guest, we'll just quickly go through those four major important areas that would be uh, the major focus of our discussion today. The United Nations General Assembly will meet on May 20th in New York exclusively to discuss Israel's ongoing offensive on the Gaza Strip. The Assembly's president for the 75th session, Volker and Bosker, announced this. Pakistan has joined hands with Palestine, Sudan and Turkey to address an emergency session on Palestine called by the United Nations General Assembly. Pakistan stands firmly with the people of Palestine, stated by the Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi. Furthermore, Israel fighter jets continue to 
Pamil, the Gaza Strip, flattening residential buildings and killing at least four Palestinians, including a journalist. At least 219 Palestinians, including 63 children, have been killed in Gaza since the latest violence flared on May the 10th. About 1,500 Palestinians have been seriously wounded. And now talking about the IDPs or the people who were displaced, the number stands at 58,000 Palestinians have been displaced by the Israeli airstrikes that have destroyed or badly damaged nearly 450 buildings. Now the actual number is 550 plus in the Gaza Strip. About 47,000 of the displaced people have sought shelter in 58 United Nations run schools in Gaza. So you can well imagine the magnitude of the problem. Now, talking about the journalist, he was a radio broadcaster. He was killed in a strike. He was a young man. But this is the story. This is what the reality is. Forget about the people. Forget about the kids, the kind of life they are, they are having at the moment. Mercy on them. Mercy is the only word which I have at the moment. But as far as the reality is concerned, God knows what's going on because the media is pretty much under a blackout. This is what it is. Now to talk about this, let me quickly introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Adnan Kesse Saab. Adnan Saab is an expert on foreign affairs, research associate, Conference of Defense Institute, Canada. Thank you so much, Adnan Kesse Saab, for your Very presence, sir. And we also have with us from London, Dr. Shahid Qureshi Saab. He's a senior analyst uh, of the London Post. Uh, Dr. Shahid Qureshi is a senior analyst with BBC and chief editor of the London Post. He writes in, on security, terrorism and foreign policy. Dr. Saab, what a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank <coughs> you so much. And we also have Dr. Dr. Uh, Jamil Khan Saab, a former ambassador, senior diplomat and an expert on IR. Ambassador Saab, pleasure to have you too, sir. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Uh, let me put the first question to you, uh, Adnan Kesesa. First of all, sir, the ongoing Israeli atrocities in in Gaza now. It seems that the Israeli forces are totally geared up for the takeover of Gaza, sir. The military incursion would soon be there, sir, because the way they are assembling their assets, the tanks, the APCs, the kind of ammunition they have, it seems that this time they are having a different uh, set of plan, I guess. Your, your take, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Faisal, for inviting me at your program. Our pleasure, It's sir. always a privilege to be at, uh, at your show. And assalamu alaikum to all your viewers. Uh, so first of all, understand that these are very, very somber moments for every Muslim, and especially for every, every Pakistani, because our hearts and minds, uh, they are in sync uh, with the Palestinians and the atrocities which are being unleashed on them. Uh, we have been at this place earlier. You know, several times in the past, this has happened. Uh, this is not the first time. So, but again, um, I always um, uh, earlier at one of the PTV programs uh, while discussing about Kashmir, I, I mentioned that you know the world must understand that the Kashmir runs in our blood stream. So even if you carry out a dialysis of every each and every Pakistani, you cannot take out Kashmir from our veins. The same thing is with the Palestinians because of the Al Quds Al Sharif. Uh, our hearts, you know, they are uh, they they bleed. Uh, with, the, with the Palestinians and the atrocities which have been unleashed. So this is one. So, so uh, what uh, Israel has, has been doing it in the past, uh, one thing is clear that, you know, this whatever uh, actions it has been taking in the past and as well as now, they are against the international norms. They are against international law. And Pakistan has always maintained a very principled stance that it has condemned uh, we are the only country in the world uh, on whose passport it is written that, uh, you know, visit to, to Israel or the state of Israel is not allowed. So that, is, that means that we have always stood for the solidarity with the, with the, with the Palestinians. This is one. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad for, from, from a different perspective, uh, whatever is happening, you know, uh, Moeed Yusuf Saab, Dr. Moeed Yusuf, who I, I read today that, you know, he has been elevated as a national security advisor uh, uh, well-deserving position. Uh, 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 he had written a, a, a book about uh, brokering uh, peace in nuclear environment, in which he highlighted three uh, elements uh, which, um, uh, for the conflict resolution. And one of them was conflict escalation, not only co conflict highlighting, 
uh, although the conflict has been highlighted in the past as well. But now the conflict has been escalated uh, to unprecedented heights. So that means now, uh, you know, we are moving towards, um, uh, towards conflict resolution. I will tell you why. Uh, there are a couple of things, if you allow me to mention. The first yes, of sir. all, you know, the, this is not the world uh, we have seen in the past. You know, after the, uh, the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war, uh, you know, uh, there have been different power centers. The United States power has been diminished, and, and the world acknowledges that. You know, uh, there are other, the China and Russia are asserting. We saw uh, Russia's role in Syria uh, during, during the Syrian civil war. So, you know, uh, we saw the, the, the Chinese, they are, they are, they are participating. Uh, they, they engaged into a 25 years strategic uh, agreement with Iran. So China is also playing a role in the Middle East. So the things are different. So now, um, as we see, uh, Pakistan has taken a, 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 a diplomatic um, uh, stance and dip diplomatic proaction. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is leading, one of the leading countries along with Turkey uh, uh, to, to highlight this issue in the United Nations mm -hmm. as well as OIC, Correct. as well as around the world. So, so I am very, very hopeful uh, that, that with this atrocities, um, the, they, one, they cannot finish the will and determination of the Palestinians. This is very important. India tried uh, for the past 70 years in Kashmir. It could not. Now, the Palestinians, the same thing. You know, since 1949, uh, when this Balfour Declaration, after the Balfour Declaration, when 1949, this, the State of Israel was created, um, you know, uh, the Muslims uh, in the region, the, in the Middle East, they have not accepted the state. Mm -hmm. So, what is the, the solution? Is the two-state solution, west of the, west of the Jordan River uh, to the Mediterranean, is the Palestinian state, which is due. And now, a, a, a lot of burden of responsibility lies on President Biden, because if you recall, it was President Obama who was the biggest proponent of, of, of the two-state two, two yeah. solution. Mm -hmm. And now, when President Biden has, uh, has uh, resurrected the, JC, uh, the JCOP, the, the, the Iranian nuclear program, so now one of the, one of the uh, issues, uh, outstanding issues, was the two-state solution. And I, I think that uh, it, is, it is incumbent upon President Biden uh, to take over the threats. Uh, Nasser, do you believe that kind of support Israelis had during the time when Trump was in power is it the same support now? Because I was reading another story, and I've heard that around $850 million worth of weapons, new weapons, new technology, um, the Israelis are purchasing, or perhaps it, is, it has already arrived to be used against uh, the Palestinians. I mean, I fail to understand the country, the biggest champions of democracy, and not only the champions, I mean, they would make sure that every country should have democracy of their own kind, eventually resulting in the worst of all kind of scenarios in those countries. Now the point is that are they sleeping? They don't want to do it? Or is it the power of the Jews <coughs> lobby out there, sir? What exactly is it? Two things, if, if you recall the history, two things, uh, uh, this, uh, the West or the imperial po powers, foreign policy dic were dictated by two things. First was the oil. Uh, the, the free shipment of oil for their industrial development. Uh, th that was their biggest concern. And the second concern uh, was the spillover of the Russian communist ideology. Uh, they didn't want it to spill into the Middle East. So that's why, you know, they, the, 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 the European powers, the United Kingdom in particular, uh, as well as United States, you know, they played a very, very a keen role uh, and a proactive role um, in, in supporting the state of Israel uh, to, to, to stop the onslaught of, of the Russians. But now the Russians are there. We saw it in the Syrian uh, civil war. The Russians are there. Uh, Turkey has an assertive role. And now, um, uh, now the things are different at this, this time. So the, uh, and now I see that the things are going to change. Um, uh, things are moving in a, in a different direction. You see the, the, the statement which has been given by the Chinese foreign minister in the United Nations Security Council. You know, he, he, uh, he did not name the country, but he, stepped, he stopped short of condemning the United States for vetoing uh, uh, the, the resolution which was there. Now they are going to the General Assembly. So, so there is a, there is a, a, a refreshed or a renewed um, uh, vigor among the different countries of the world uh, who realize 
that this is an unjust situation, unjust um, uh, stance which has been taken by and and, and and understand this thing. It is very important for the world to understand that this resistance is legitimately accepted in the UN Charter. That everywhere we saw in the history, uh, even um, uh, unfortunate to, to mention about the, the Mukti Banis, but the Tamil Tigers uh, in East Timor, uh, in Bosnia, everywhere people uh, took arms. You saw recently in Taliban's affair, uh, you know, there was ethnic... Um, uh, I mean, Americans, I mean, they're playing such a negative role. I mean, wherever they have their own interest, they would call them the rebels against any regime. For example, ISIS was created by them. They used to be called rebels at that time, the rebels against the Syrian regime. Then the Quds were supported against the Turkish as well as the Iraqi areas. You know, uh, so... I mean, they're playing a very, very, I think, dodgy kind of a no, game. No, but, but, but there is a realization. You know, American power has receded. Now America is cognizant about its, its uh, position. Uh, we saw that the world has seen. And, and I always mention that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the world is dictated uh, by the United States, but the United States is not the whole world as such. So you the know, kind now, of now power they enjoy and plus whoever is against, I mean, if they favor any country legitimately or illegitimately, I mean, they get the support. But, 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 but sir, moving on now, sir, uh, I, I'll, I'll also bring in uh, Dr. Shahid Qureshi saab uh, in the conversation and I would put this very straight question to you sir this ongoing genocide or perhaps you may also call it uh, ethnic cleansing this is exactly what it is uh, where is this conflict leading sir and if I may ask you is this a political issue or is this a religious issue sir Shahid sir well thank you for, uh, for your good question I will just give a bit of a background because Pakistani uh, uh, media and uh, some academics get very hyper and excited when they hear, when they hear the word Israel. So I'd just like to give you a brief what Israel is. Uh, the former Egyptian uh, president said that there can't be any peace between Israelis and the Egyptians because when the Israelis left, they were black, and when they came back, they were all white. What he meant was that current Israel is a uh, plantation of... Uh, uh, white Jewish uh, population from Britain, Canada, United States, Russia. There are about 1.2 million Russians living in Israel at the moment. They have their own TV channel, they have their own newspapers, and they are some of them are called Putin's Jews. Now, coming to the uh, the other part, which Pakistanis get very excited about recognizing Israel. How can a country can be recognized which does not? have its own border and how can those who in Pakistan justify that Pakistan should recognize Israel without knowing the whole address because Israel hasn't submitted its map in the United Nations at the moment. Number three, uh, at the time of Nuremberg trial there were only 26 people, 26 Nazis were convicted in Nuremberg crime, uh, war crime tribunal. So where did the rest of the Nazis go? Uh, according to the reports, the CIA and FBI has hosted oh, more than 20,000 Nazis in USA, which they used against uh, Soviets in the Cold War. And coming forward, in 2016, we published a report by the CIA that in 20 years, Israel is going to disappear. And that was their own experts' assessment, and they have given their own reasons. Now, if we look at the current status, why it is happening in the last 10 days. In the last two years, the Israeli politicians have failed to form a government. They're going to have their fifth elections. And the U.S. is, and the world is watching them and saying to them, you're so incompetent, basically, that you cannot run a country. If we look at the uh, Lebanese border, there's U.N. forces between the Israeli and the uh, Hezbollah. If you look on the Golan side, there's UN forces and the Syrians and the Israelis. If you look at the Gaza side, that side is uh, controlled by the Egyptians on the, uh, under the uh, Al-Sisi's uh, secular government. Now, coming to the next point, which is what does Al-Quds mean to us? Al-Quds is not a Palestinian issue. Al-Quds is an issue of the Muslims. And this is the responsibility of the Muslims of the world. Number three, the, the expectations from the OIC or the Arab leagues or the UAE is useless because these are the people who are respons 
possible that Al Quds is in the occupation at the moment. So you can't expect the people who put you in, a, in, in that situation to get you out. Now, coming to what is the solution for this problem and what Pakistan can do? Pakistan can do exactly the same which Pakistan did in the last 40 years while well, they were facing the Soviets in Afghanistan and subsequently the uh, United States. Pakistan do the same thing, what the Americans did to Pakistan in terms of supporting the BRA, BLA, uh, allegedly, and USA is supporting YPG, T K PKK in, uh, in Syria and Iraq against the Turkey and also against the Syrians and they bring in black water against the Iraqis in the Iraq. So all the friends of uh, United States, Pakistan, Turkey, they are NATO member. Pakistan is not a NATO member, but Pakistan is very, Pakistan thinks that they're married to the Americans. But the, the Americans think that the Pakistan is their girlfriend. Now, Henry Kissinger very uh, eloquently said that it is irrelevant if the US punishes its enemies or not, but it definitely punishes its friends. And that's the case with Pakistan. For example, we have 4 million refugees hosting them the uh, Turkey has about 4 million refugees from Syria, from Iraq at the moment. So they burden these countries with refugees, internal crises, and they still pray, pretend to be friends. What I haven't seen in, uh, for example, in Afghanistan, there was no protest. I never seen any Afghan protesting out on the road or outside the US embassy or British embassy. What we see now here at the moment, in today's day, they call it uh, mowing the lawn which means every four or five years they go back, they destroy all the infrastructure, <clears throat> cause genocide, they commit war crimes, nobody does anything on this. With regards to the, uh, what is the UN is doing? UN is a useless body, it is a dysfunctional element. Uh, and uh, if anybody has any expectation from them, there, there won't be any any outcome, uh, positive outcome. I mean, US is openly, uh, big, becoming partner in crime by supplying the arms. And as, as we speak, they're about, I published, I wrote this story that the British Jews are uh, uh, joined the uh, Israeli army. And today, Harry Fair is also tweeting that the British citizens are committing war crimes when they go to Israel, fight with the Palestinians, and they come back in their jeans. Every year from uh, United Kingdom, uh, young Jewish children goes to, uh, to Israel and they receive active military training. We raised this question in the House of Lords. We wanted to know that how many uh, members of the British jury go or Jewish children go to Israel and get military training. Because if it is true with Pakistani, for example, or any Indian, they would be in jail by now because it is illegal under the Enlistment Act of the United Kingdom to join any foreign country's army. Obviously, so the situation out there is so that fluid. Is, that we do not even know what's going to happen next. But one thing is for sure, that Israel is going to continue this because look at the body language, look at the statements coming from the um, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. He believes that uh, this operation, he called it an operation, is going to go on. And most likely, he really wants that all the sort of, uh, you know, adversaries present inside Hamas should be eliminated for once and all. No matter well, what is the cost that. of life, it's not there, possible yeah. for him. He won't be able to do that. I'm sorry to say that Netanyahu but, has but is going Shaisab, to jail. You can I mean, just imagine He's going within, to within a matter of 25 minutes, they had hit 122 uh, bombs or missiles included. So, and the kind of weapons they're using, you're well aware of that. That one missile can take out a whole building, which is 14, 15 stories high. So, that is the kind of ammunition that is being used. Nobody well, is Hamas talking is about it. The West is totally uh, quiet. The media uh, is totally yeah, quiet. Hamas is very well aware with that. They have done the assessment of what is going to be coming from them. Or the perhaps the Hamas the really wants them to come inside Gaza and then have no, Hamas, face the guerrilla the warfare. The Israelis will never come inside Gaza. They will never dare come inside Because sir, they have tasted. And, and, tasted. and when you say Netanyahu is, is, brave, is a brave face, he's going to go to jail, uh, I tell you, very soon. Because he is facing three corruption trials. If there is international justice, escalation. but sir, they do not fall into that category where the International Court of Justice or other similar institutions can put a check on Israel or USA for that matter. They are trigger happy. They can do whatever they want to do. And they've been doing it in the past. 
they are doing it in the present and they will continue to do it in the future also. But let me go on to now uh, Ambassador Saab. Ambassador Jaleel, Jameel Khan Saab, first of all, say your take on the, on the current happenings. And do you believe that diplomatic efforts would be fruitful there, sir? Because a lot of yeah, people obviously. believe that China and Russia, these are the two countries, if they exert pressure, things can change. But sir, looking at the overall protests that have taken place, one was in Karachi, one was in Peshawar, and there were about more than 100 or 120 other places all over the globe, especially in Europe. Not even a single protest. And even there was one in Brazil. There wasn't one in China. There wasn't one in Russia. So your take. Um, let me pick, uh, pick it up from uh, where you ended about the procession. And then I'll also highlight about the problem um, uh, in addition to what has already been said. And there Please. is solution. So, so let me first describe these processions, these protests. Are they more intense? than what it was while Bush had attacked Iraq? The answer is no. During that time, against the Security Council resolution, if the Bush could unilaterally go along with its allies and attack Iraq, and the processions and protests could not have any impact on him to stop uh, that atrocity, then do we think at this time, once we started having these protests, which is 10 times uh, lesser in intensity, uh, could have an impact on Israel and U.S. Probably, um, it um, uh, with any analogy, it uh, doesn't seem to happen. Now, let me come quickly on the problem. Israel, Israel basically is uh, uh, following the agenda of Zionism, and that agenda was evolved. That master plan was evolved in 1897 um, and from there onward israel came into being the the, the war 48 63 67 73 and so on israel israel has been capturing the land of palestine and then nothing happened in, in despite the fact that there is there are security council resolution particularly Security Council Resolution 2334 and Security Council Resolution 478, both they both are uh, the, the resolution which stops Israel to uh, bring any disturbance into the, the disputed territory. But despite that, they shifted their uh, capital from Tel Aviv to uh, the Jerusalem. Despite that, they have captured a sizable land of the Palestinian people. Despite that, they are still trying to evict uh, Sheikh Jarrah um, area, uh, Palestinian, from their homes. So all these things are happening in the presence of the international law, Security Council ch uh, Charter, uh, uh, United Nations Charter, and the relevant article. So all these things are happening in the face of it. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, that Israel were, seems to be uh, carrying on with its agenda, which it has evolved um, uh, long ago. Now, that agenda, uh, uh, could it be stopped? Yes. Now, there is a new geopolitical and geostrategic dimension in this entire area. The Russians, for the first time in the last 25 years, they have now come to the Mediterranean Sea, and they have their uh, warship in that area. The Russians first time in 25 years, they are just sitting in uh, Syria. The Russian first time, again, they have started having their ingress in the Middle East. Chinese, they have their uh, geoeconomic uh, combined with geostrategic interest in Middle East. Now, Chinese, day before yesterday, uh, made an official statement in addition to what have was said after the Security Council meeting, and it has been quoted by Mr. Kasser. Uh, Mr. Kasser has already quoted that, so I'll not touch upon that. In addition to that, the spokesperson of the Foreign Office, China, he says that it must stop the the atrocity, the violence must stop against the Muslim, and world should extend help to the area to the Palestinians. And uh, he has really issued a very strong statement. Russians, now it has uh, been reported in one of the press in the UK, Mr. Kreshi probably would be in a better position to throw some light on it, and that is the Daily Express, I guess, in which uh, it has uh, been quoted, the, the National Security Council meeting of uh, Pudding, 
and there he said that we cannot keep quiet and we have to really uh, take parts uh, part into uh, uh, bringing the calm in the area so the interest of russian the interest of china this could bring some pressure otherwise what martin yahu had said that this time we have deployed our forces on the boundary of gaza and whatever area we capture we are going to annex it here the north gate now yesterday the uh, foreign uh, the, the defense minister has made a very clear and candid statement that united states their support in blocking the security council joint statement he was thankful to them and he said we will carry on the defense minister israel said we'll carry on with our agenda until we completely quiet the uh, hamas uh, for a longer period of time now chinese with a population of 1.41 billion and the muslim population about 2.2 billion now this uh, chinese feel that they could compete with us united states uh, in, in their economic pursuit in their geopolitical pursuit in their geo strategic pursuit by gaining the strength in this entire region so have said so what pakistan should do i think foreign minister and the prime minister have taken a very proactive role in outreaching various set of states and various foreign minister fine enough that's very uh, uh, that's an excellent point they have done. Uh, they, they, they are following but wasn't that necessary to complement it with all the 100 embassies over 100 embassies of pakistan once this general assembly meeting is scheduled that is on the 20th that yeah. each member state has one vote and but but uh, ambassador sahab a quick comment a quick comment before i turn back to the studio and that is about a statement from the united states of america and that was reported in al jazeera what it said that uh, us says that united nations security council statement won't calm the israel palestinian conflict despite the fact that look at the number of uh, members who supported uh, the palestinians in that but the americans again vetoed it so do you think this role of united nations uh, you know because if you remember last time when donald trump uh, faced a similar problem when the new uh, capital was announced of israel and uh, nikki haley was the ambassador in the united nations and imagine even then they were able to pull it out sir despite all odds so that's right i think our um, uh, our history has shown that no resolution security council resolution was implemented either in kashmir or in palestine so once those resolutions have not been implemented so when, when united is nations is living on donations from united states of america i mean why would they go against them simple as that only, even only, if you remember only, trump threatened them that he's going to cut down the 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 kind of money that is given to united nations so obviously money makes the mayor go sir money matters that's this right, is what it is all about not only that i i have served in united nations as country head of various countries uh and i know the about 34 to 35% donation uh, th- a contribution of the united um, the states and all other con- uh, countries and they contribute towards the budget of the <clears throat> united nations but the more important thing is that um, united states is also hosting the the headquarter of the united um, uh, nations so and then it has its influence on united nations united nations right. we should understand the security council is a uh, is a political forum it's not a legal forum so therefore what shall be done basically if there is no secu- uh, united nations then you would have had world war right. 3 much i think much all right so uh, I'll, i'll get back to you on, on that but let me put this put this question here to uh, our friend uh, sir now two important areas last night we were having a discussion on the similar issue and then uh, one of our panelists uh, former ambassador he said that you know whatever hamas is doing is in fact something which is very counterproductive for the entire cause because if they are sending in rockets either they're being stopped uh, by that uh, drone or or perhaps when the israelis retaliate what they do is like we have seen that on tv and this is what is reported so god knows what the actual situation is out there but the point is sir that these rockets few of the rockets versus the fourth largest and <coughs> most technically advanced military in the world sir 
who Can even upgrade to the your latest uh, weaponry of the Americans also. Your take on that, sir? Well, uh, thank you very much. So. Uh, uh, give me a few minutes to, to, to highlight. Uh, while we are condemning, we are analyzing the international situation as such or the, or the response of international community, we must introspect uh, the internal dichotomies of the Muslim world as well, as well as what has been going on in, um, in the intra-Palestinian intra feuds. So um, before I come to this one, um, you see, I see it in a broader perspective. Whatever this, this when you mentioned about Hamas, uh, which is which is a, a, a rightful uh, observation. Uh, you know, when this Natanz uh, sabotage uh, took place in Iranian nuclear facility on 12th of April. You know, if you recall, uh, Iran had threatened or um, and, and and vowed vengeance. Uh, revenge against Israel. It blamed Israel for the Natan sabotage and hit hit. And now understand uh, Hamas and, and Iran have, have very, very close ties with each other. So since uh, Hamas uh, uh, won the elections in Palestine in the Gaza territory um, uh, since 2005, you know, it has entrenched itself and it is a popular movement. Now understand, as I earlier mentioned, uh, that the resistance is a legitimate response by the oppressed. It is, it is internationally recognized. So whatever uh, these rocket attacks which they have been taking, it is their right. They are, they are resisting it. So now, so this connected with Natanz, and now I come to, to another problem uh, in, in, is, is the, is the, is the intra-Muslim um, uh, feuds, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iranian problems, and then Saudi Arabia had a problem with Turkey as well uh, due to Jamal Khashoggi's uh, incident, and then uh, Saudi Arabia had a problem with uh, Qatar, Qatar as well, and the, the war in Yemen as well. But now, you know, saner uh, elements have prevailed, and now Saudi Arabia is is, is, is redrawing its its focus and now it is and I'm very happy uh, to, to, to learn that today uh, the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia has stated uh, that you know uh, they, they are moving towards a rapprochement uh, towards towards Iran so this is a good thing and now Saudi Arabia has meant ties uh, with Turkey as well as well as in Lebanon as well so now the things are moving this is one so this is this 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 Middle East problem the Muslim problem has to be addressed so Israel basically, um, um, you know, um, make use of it, uh, our internal dissensions and chasms, uh, it, it, it exploits them. This is one. So now uh, you see when um, uh, I see there are a lot of, lot of onus of responsibility falls on the, the, those countries like UAE uh, who had done the Abraham Accords. Uh, so this is one. They must stress upon Israel to honor their pledges which they had made mm -hmm. uh, towards the Palestinian third. Uh, is the intra feuds, you know, Hamas and Islamic Jihad is are on one side and Fatah are Fata on, on, uh, on other side because on the West Bank. So now I think, uh, with due respect, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of uh, Palestine, his uh, shelf life is over. He should retire. And now the, this is one of the, uh, the, the problems in Palestine, the intra uh, Palestinian feuds. So this must come to an end. So all these issues, they are being exploited. And finally, uh, allow me to say that the Israel's own political situation, for in the past two years, it had four elections. Yes, even and now, now currently they're facing the same. And perhaps the Modi's design, you know, go after the Palestinians the way uh, he would always bash Pakistan and win the election and get the majority because currently he's stuck. Now coming back to you, uh, sir, do you believe, uh, that's up that, uh, before uh, Shahid Saab, let me put this question to our uh, friend from, from London. Uh, Shahid Saab, Im interestingly, do you believe that the, I, I will not call them the non-state actors because these are the legitimate uh, movements for the right of self-determination basically, whether it's Hamas or Al Fateh Brigade or perhaps some other similar institutions or organizations uh, working for a cause, do you believe their effort, whatever they do, is counterproductive for the entire cause because sir, at the end of the day, what we see is absolute destruction of the city. No water, no food, no medicine, no light, nothing. And on top, look at the number of injured and people who are killed. Shahid sir. Can I just respond to you? Thank you for this question. It's a good question. When Alexander the Great was uh, conquering the whole world, 
there were two places he faced resistance. Number one was Palestine, and number two was, two was Pakistan. He was fatally injured in Multan Fort, and formerly died in uh, somewhere close to Jhelum. With regards to the Palestinian resistance towards the, against this occupation, they, are going, they have every right to resist. This is under the UN Charter that they will resist against it. And those, uh, there was an assessment sent by the American ambassador from Afghanistan to, to the State Department. And he mentioned a few points. And he said, we can't be successful in Afghanistan, number one. We don't have a middle class, uh, a corrupt middle class, which we have in Pakistan and in India and other colonial countries who can control the uh, freedom fighters at the time. and. Uh, etc. Number three, we have in Afghanistan, they have a person who buy one clothes, one, one pair of shoes, and the, he kept on fighting and he has nothing else to do. And th this is what the, uh, when we see the body language between the, in Qatar, between Pompeo and the Afghan commander, if you look at the body language, anyone with a little bit of brain will think that what is the language of power? and how you respond to that power, no matter how big you are, how small you are. At the moment, the fact of the matter is that the six million Jews are in the bunkers, no matter how small rocket Hamas is firing. This is the fact, those 130 or 160 Jews who got, or Israelis who got injured, they didn't get, most of them didn't get injured because of the rockets. They got injured because they were running to the bunkers. And the two kids who got killed, they got, killed because the uh, the bunker was full now do the those foreign nationals in uh, uh, british american canadian uh, european uh, all from central asia from uh, uh, from morocco from russia from africa ethiopia these jews were living there they all have second nationalities israel is part of the eurovision song contest so they are a, an, a plantation which is which has divided loyalties. They will leave this space as soon as possible. And the people who are living, the Palestinians, for example, they are living there for centuries. And and, and that's all. That is why some wise, sane voices in the Jewish community also says that Zionism is the biggest conspiracy against the Jews, and they don't they don't recognize. Israel, they, there's some people close to my even house, they burn the Israeli flag. They don't recognize it and they don't do any military service in the Israeli uh, Zionist regime's, uh, 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 regime's uh, uh, business. So what we see is an alliance of the Europeans in Israel. Well, we see an alliance of the Europeans in European Union and we see the biggest European alliance in the United States. United States is the biggest alliance of all the Europeans uh, who killed the native Indians. And most of them, I mean, British, our, our queen, uh, mother, sister, queen, sister used to call it colonies, the, the Americans. They, they send all, all the criminals from here. And same is the case with the Australia. All the criminals, all the petty criminals were sent to plantations in the USA. And that thing has continued. The United States mentality in last 70 years, US has caused more than 185 wars. It killed more than 30 million people. It sold $3 trillion worth of arms to the world. So US war economy is the main root cause. And what Mitch, finally, somebody who realized the problem is President Biden. He says, we need to build up the country. We have bridges who are 100 years old. We have roads who are more than 40 years old so Correct. finally and that was the truth yeah he wanted to build his home but the war industry all right sir. all right now uh, coming to you the uh, ambassador saab since we are running out of time but, sir, please yeah now ambassador saab okay the war is there the conflict is there it has been there for such a long time one of the oldest issues in the united nations uh Sir, humanitarian crisis, I mean, don't you think that should be the real focus now? Because people need help. Gaza needs help. And uh, when you talk about the entrance of uh, some certain essential uh, humanitarian uh, suppliers, including medicine, food, water for that matter, sir, don't you think that should be the first focus, sir? And the United I Nations 
should gear up at least for this particular purpose ambassador sir that's the most powerful focus which the world can have because humanitarian <laughs> ground any assistance sent to the palestinian uh, hardly any country i would say no country would be in a position moral position to object to it right and then if they do that including united states then they would have the bottom of pressure they will have their own people really making hue and cry like what happened qatar qatar has been uh, qatar had withdrawn their support not that strong Pressure support which he's been giving to hamas hamas uh, but then they withdrew it because they had a big <clears throat> protest just 3 days ago so my point is that yes uh, humanitarian assistance through unrwa which is a un platform or even otherwise Pakistan has also decided that should go on and that should be the main pressure and that should be the main focus and the, um, the general assembly um, the meeting on the 20th they should definitely draw this emphasis on it oic they had uh, they, they had conducted a meeting which is a third year meeting the first year meeting under the uh, article uh, of the united uh, under the article of the oic they could not follow that the uh, the head of the state summit and neither they did that uh, for the foreign ministers uh, council they could not do it under article 10 then finally they did it under article 12 which is the executive committee so they did not put any importance to this although the joint communique uh, has a good material in it and on the basis of which they had requested the general assembly for the um, uh, for this meeting so my point is that uh, that is one aspect they should try and even the oic and the other powerful countries including pakistan they should follow this humanitarian ground and then uh, they should go on with that uh, further and this two state theory and uh, uh, trump had already israel israel is working on one state our panelists have already discussed about two state theory oslo and camp david and um, the, and even the security council resolution but what i can see and my analysis is that israel is working on one state theory you know and there once not in you three days ago once he made a statement that he is once he captures gaza strip uh, whatever uh, territory he captures he is going to annex it that 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 is a clear demonstration of what trump had said that exactly. okay, the territory of one state exactly, and we might as well choose one and the indicator the preceding indicators of the gulf states all right sir All right. Thank you so much, Ambassador, sir, for your comments. And I, I totally agree, sir. Whenever the war takes place, eventually Israel ends up getting more of the Palestinian land. Sir, last quick. Yeah, just one sentence. One I wish to say that you know, uh, first of all, uh, the world is changing. Uh, I am very hopeful this time because of one thing, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Moeed Yusuf has written that the conflict has been escalated. It has been uh, read so so it has been intensified. This is one. Secondly, uh, there is a new thinking in Israel as well. Either you want a Jewish state or you want democracy. In democracy, uh, you need to accommodate other All ethnic minorities are, as well. There, yeah, lastly, Muslims, lastly, Muslims, lastly yeah. uh, in the Middle East as well, there is an Arab Spring point two point zero. or the the resurgent of the arab spring of 2011 it is ongoing it has taken place in iraq in lebanon and it is it is spilling it is so and this is very hopeful sign uh, that that things would eventually change I, I, we can only hope and pray no sir. because we rest, cannot rest. nobody can stop the will and determination of the people at the end of the day that matters the most sir. but thank you very much adnan saab ambassador saab was a pleasure having you shahid saab Thank you so much for your time as well, and that's all we have um, for this up. I'll see you inshallah tomorrow at eight o'clock. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.